play it yourself. Let's go check it out. Come on. do is we're going to look at some of these sediments and I'm going to switch over to another piece of paper right here and one of the first sediments that we're going to look at is sand and the sand is a pretty interesting sediment if you look at it carefully so I have my spoon here and I'm going to put a little bit of this sand over here on this camera and so you can take a look at it and the first thing I want you to notice when you look at your sand is that the particles are very small. In fact, you can get a few of these on your finger and you can see that these are small and they're also kind of shiny. They look like little pieces of glass. And as a matter of fact, uh, what you're seeing here are sediments that have been broken up and broken up mostly by water. Number two, wind. And finally, number three, ice. Those three forces are really important in shaping Indiana and they are three forces that weather rocks. Weathering a rock is the breaking down of rock. Erosion is when you move rocks and sediments and deposit is when they pile up. We're going to be doing both. So you see right here the sand. On the sand here these sediments are quite small. The sand is going to be the first thing that you put in. The second thing you're going to put in is something called peat and the peat is pretty interesting material. In fact, I'm going to uh, put about a spoon of this peat out here. This peat, if you look at it carefully, is actually small bits and pieces of dead swamp plants called sphagum moss. And mostly this is dead plants. And we have a name for that. It's called organic. Organic material means it used to be alive or it is alive. So this is actually something that is pretty good for plants because a lot of the nutrients are still in it and it also has other chemicals in it. So this is peat and the peat, if you look at it carefully here, is almost like dried coffee. And so it's organic. If peat is organic, sand is inorganic, which means it never was alive. So one thing has been alive, the other one, inorganic, is never been or never will be alive. So that will be our second material, peat. And then we're going to put some gravel. It is inorganic, which means it wasn't alive, and gravel has been tumbled in streams or rivers, and thousands of times as it rubs against each other, those sediments start to wear away or weather away and make these nice rounded ed edges. Now the last thing we're going to add, and we're not going to add too much to this because uh, this is soil. It used to be all kinds of dead plants, animals, and insects. So my question, is that organic or is that inorganic? And the answer is organic because it has lots of things in it that used to be living. As a matter of fact, when you pick up some of this soil, just think of all the dead grasshoppers, all the dead plants and leaves, all the dead worms and insects, and all kind of creatures, tree limbs and pieces that have been decomposed and turned into soil. That's why soil has nutrients if there's lots of living things in it. All right, first thing we're going to do is take your bottle right here, and I'm going to set my bottle on top of this. We're going to put some sand in here. now. Several ways to do that. The, probably the easiest way is to take a piece of paper and make a little funnel out of it. About uh, three or four, three or four spoons of sand here. 
You can put more sand. Sand is, is the one thing you can put the most of in your bottle because we should get a kind of a nice layer. Let me switch over to my other camera here. Okay, I've made my funnel. And now I'm going to uh, carefully put the sand in. And you'll notice you can see the individual particles as they're going down. And as it goes down, you should also notice that it's changing the uh, little bit, the color of the water just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to let gravity do its work. And if you notice, there's a layer of sand at the bottom, layer of sand at the bottom, and the water has turned a bit brown. Okay, so we have a layer of sand. All of this fell due to gravity. Okay, the next thing I'm going to put in is peat. I'm going to put one spoon of peat right there. I'm going to take it and switch cameras and carefully. And the first thing I notice is that all the peat is floating. In fact, the peat is floating. So what does that tell me about the density of the peat? The sand would sink and the peat floats. So this must be much less dense than the sand. So that's interesting. I'm already starting to get some layers and I haven't hardly done anything but just add sand and some peat. Well, the next thing we're going to add is the gravel. And I have a feeling since when you feel this gravel, it's, it's quite heavy, that it's going to make a big difference in our, in our sediment bottle. Let me switch over here. I'm going to probably put about three spoons, two or three spoons of gravel in mine. Let me switch cameras. And I got my... Now watch what happens. We still have peat at top, sand at the bottom, and we got some interesting sediments floating down. Now there's a name for this right now. This is called a heterogeneous solution. Heterogeneous means it's not mixed up, it's not the same. There's stuff at the top, there's stuff in the middle, and stuff at the bottom. Let me put it, here comes the gravel. Check yours out when you do it, and I'm going to see what might happen. First thing, the gravel goes right to the bottom and really stirs things up. Now I haven't shaken this at all, and I don't know if we can see it here. Uh, let me hold this. <clears throat> you can see some really cool layers. I see sand. I see gravel. You got these sediments going right here. Here's the sand right here. Here's my gravel. And all these sediments are still in solution. As I go up, you'll see what's at the very top there. Ah, still have our peat floating. Now right now, this kind of looks like a regular Indiana stream after it's been raining. But if the field has been plowed and we get a lot of soil mixed in, we're going to see a dramatic change. Let me switch back to this camera. Here's my soil. I'm only going to put one spoon of soil in there because what I know about this soil, it's pretty dramatic. And the first thing you notice is that it turned very dark, at least mine did. A big difference now between the different layers. Okay, so we've added, first of all, we added our sand. After our sand, we added some peat. After our peat, we added a little bit of gravel, and we topped it off with some soil. However, nature doesn't let things just stay like this. And so, because of gravity, what I'm going to do here now is, first of all, you should probably draw this on your worksheet to see what it looks like. But I'm going to uh, do something that's kind of, kind of interesting. I'm going to shake this completely up. First, I'm just going to shake it like this, up and down, to see what happens to it. I'm going to stop and watch what happens. And what I noticed right away was that some things fell out in layers again. We have layers here already. This looks like, looks like the sand and gravel have mixed. But we still got some things floating up top. But we got quite a mixture of sediments in solution. And this is the material that I was telling you about that leaves our state when it rains, this good soil and this good peat. And that's a good thing for a farm. So we like to find ways to not have this erode out of our state. <music>